Hello, my children. Has no talent here, and today I want to talk about one of the best fucking stealth games ever made. My mind is blown by how amazingly awesome this game is, and I couldn't live with myself if I didn't make a video and share it with you guys. I recently bought an Oculus Quest 2. I had previously owned an Oculus Rift, but I had to sell it to pay for bills when I was really sick a couple of years ago and couldn't work. But now that I'm good to go and had some extra money, I bought another headset and have been thoroughly enjoying my time with it. During my adventures looking for great games to play, I stumbled across a stealth game that has left me jaw dropped. The game I want to talk about is called Espire 1 VR Operative. Espire is a stealth game where you play as an agent that uses a neural link to connect to robots called Espire. Using this neural VR link, the operative controls the robot to perform stealth missions remotely without putting themselves in danger. Because you're controlling a robot, this allows you some extra skills that a human wouldn't have. Skills like having throwable cameras that pop out of your hands, picture in picture on their camera feed, magnetized hands that can bring guns to you from a distance, and also super strong robot hands that'll allow you to climb where a human wouldn't have the strength to. That's the basic premise. It seems simple, but there's so, so much more to this game originating from its extremely systemic gameplay, which I will get to in a second. First though, I just want to get something out of the way. If you look on Steam right this second, you will see that Espire has mixed reviews. I'm not normally one to disparage anyone's experience because what you feel is what you feel, but there are literally only three ways I can possibly understand someone not thinking this is a good stealth game. One is that you don't like or understand stealth games to begin with. Two is that you're incapable of critical thinking. And three is that you're fucking boring. I really don't see how anyone could give this game a negative review unless at least one of those three things happens to be the case for them. This is not including the possibility that the game was really bad at launch and then they fixed it later. I wouldn't know. I'm playing the game right now and the game we have right now is fucking sick. So that being said, why do I think it's a good game? The mechanics. My fucking lord, the mechanics. There is just so much possible in this game through only systemic interaction that I have only ever had one single idea I have tried not work. But to understand all that's possible through systemic interaction, we first have to go over the basics. To show you guys the gameplay, I'm going to record myself in VR live with no script. So if the mic quality is bad or I stumble on words, that's because the mic quality is bad and I stumbled on the words. All right then, let's go over the basics. Hello, my children. Here we are at the beginning of mission four, and I'm going to show you the basics of Espire. This room has these two guys in it. We'll get to them in a minute, but we will start. So, have your robot hands, have your guns. You can also magnetize with your hands. Put a gun on your chest. And you can make cameras, which you can see have picture-in-picture, picture, different zoom levels, and this button up here makes a noise to attract guards. You can throw these cameras and move your body to move the camera feed, so quite useful. Besides that, we have a repair tool. Now when you get hurt, orbs float in front of you when you're holding the repair tool and you shock them, which uses some of your energy, and it will heal you. Now the repair tool is also used if you're lost, you hilariously throw it at the ground and it gives you a path to your waypoint. The path it gives you is not, not the only route. You, there's plenty of ways to get where you're going, it's just a route. Besides that, we can grab basically everything that's metal and some things that are not, like boxes. And, I mean, the possibilities of where to go are really endless because, I mean, anything that is metal, you can climb. So, you can climb way up high, around rooms, whatever. Also, I'm crouching in real life now. It moves wherever you move. You can go prone, all sorts of things. So, those are the basics. Besides one thing, which I will show you. There is one more cool mechanic that is built into the game using the microphone. Freeze! There you go. You say freeze in real life to hold people up. So there you go. Those are the basics. You have a repair tool you can throw, a trank pistol, throwable noise-making hand cameras, magnet hands, and you can climb anything metal. Those are the basics, but those basics got me thinking. What else could be possible with these simple tools? Well, let's find out. 
So as I was playing, I got thinking, you know, you throw your repair tool to lead you where to go. Do they respond to this? Can you distract them by throwing your repair tool? You could use your camera instead, of course, but maybe there's an alternative. Holy crap, it works! It sure does. Now... How do you like that? Combine the two. Perfect. But... We lure them with that. Can we lure a guard by throwing a gun instead? Holy crap, that works too. Ammo out of a gun, right? So, shit, can we throw that too? That works. So, I've been kind of drawing this out just to be playful, but I'll rip through some things. I pulled up my repair tool, noticed it had electricity going, so I thought, hey, can you shock people with this? And yes, you can. You can get to them. Knocks them right out. And you can use it on turrets, you can use it on mines on the ground, you can use it on all sorts of things in the game. And it, it doesn't tell you this, you know? You just figure out, you like, see the lightning, you're like, I wonder if that can shock a person, and it totally can. So, things like that in this game, it's just so amazing how far you can take such a simple mechanic. Now let's climb down here. But you can fling yourself, and there's spots in the game where, say, we can grab here, but not until up to the square part there, so all of this was ungrabbable. You're like, well, I can't reach physically in real life that high. Maybe if I jumped and punched my ceiling. But you can fling yourself and grab like it's fucking Assassin's Creed. It's, it's, it's so cool. Like, there's actually so many options just from this simple grabbing mechanic. Ugh. You know? So, I want to show you guys one last cool thing that I discovered by accident. Can we shoot his gun out of his hand? Fuck, I missed. Let's try one more time. Fuck! Well, it took a couple tries, but there you go. You can even shoot their gun out of their fucking hand. That's a little more in depth than what it seems at first. Not only that, those things are so much more rewarding and engaging because the game did not explain them to me. They were all ideas that I had in the moment and I got them playing organically. I couldn't help but be reminded of Dishonored 1 where if you thought it was possible and you tried it, it probably worked. I mean, we took the four simple mechanics of repair tool, climbing, hand camera, and movement and we were able to... Use the repair tool to distract, use guns to distract, use magazines to distract, use objects to distract, use the repair tool to shock people, use the repair tool to shut off turrets, use the repair tool to shut off lasers and cameras, use going prone to get under low tables, use our voice to hold people up, use our robot arms to climb and shoot at the same time, use our momentum flinging while climbing to reach spots you wouldn't be able to otherwise, use our momentum flinging to climb with one arm while aiming the gun with the other, use our weapon to shoot the fucking gun right out of the enemy's hand, use the the hand camera to aim around corners. Use the hand camera to blind fire and kill people around corners. Use the hand camera to watch behind you while you aim forward. Use the hand camera to tag enemies. Steal the ammo from an enemy's weapon and add it to our reserves. And finally, which I just learned as I recorded, you can grab the enemy's gun from his hand when you're holding him up. Actually, I recorded this in two sessions, and in between the last session and this one, I also discovered that you could use mines left over by guards, use objects to throw at guards and knock them out, use objects placed in patrol paths to trip guards and knock them out, lure guards to open restrictive doors, and you can switch the hand you're holding guns with so you can peek around corners with the safer shoulder. I mean, fuck's sakes, I can't even finish making the video fast enough before I learn new shit you can do. People have the audacity to call this a bad game? This? This fucking game where the only limitation is your own creativity? Where you come up with an idea off the top of your head in a stressful situation and have it just work? This game where you can climb almost anything and create any dynamic route through the level? This game where you have full control over kiting enemies, getting them where you want, distracting them, disarming them, knocking them out, hiding from them? I mean, it's basically a first-person Metal Gear Solid mixed with Splinter Cell mixed with Dishonored. This is heaven. It's gotta be. 
That's not even getting into the level design or anything else either. I replayed through the second level to show a friend and I ended up going a different path to get to the objective and like 40% of the level was completely different. I was really surprised. The path your repair tool shows you is only the most direct route and is not the only way to get to your goal. So the complexity of routes and options and approach is really only limited by your own perception and imagination. There are so many different ways to play and you can even ghost through the whole game and beat it non-lethally. That's not to say the game is perfect, it totally isn't, it can be glitchy and janky as well as some other annoyances. The aiming feels weird sometimes, it seems to be adjusted for being right eye dominant, at least with the right hand setting enabled and options, but it kind of fucks with me because although I'm right handed and sight rifles with my right eye as you would expect, I tend to sight pistols with my left eye so it never seems quite right. You could sight with both eyes open of course, but I find that doesn't work very well in VR for whatever reason. The guards also never shut the fuck up, a complaint you'll read a lot in Steam reviews, although I'm going to be fair and say that the mechanic itself does make a lot of sense, even though it's really fucking annoying. See, the guards announce when they restart the patrol route, so if a guard starts at point A and then goes to point B and then back to A, he'll say, doing another round, or something like that, and then proceed to B again. This announces to the player that he's restarting his route. In a VR game that's first person, where your turning speed and movement is limited to the actual movement speed of a bot in real life, it's important to be able to have some sort of awareness that a guard might be coming your way without having to look in his direction. The game does have mechanics to get around this, of course, with you know, HUD markers and hand cameras and seeing guards through walls and stuff, but I think it would make the game a lot more difficult if they didn't announce when they were restarting the route. Judging by how many people missed so many mechanics in the game, maybe it's best they left it in, even if it is annoying. Besides that, there's a lot of general VR jank, not grabbing what you want, grabbing the wrong thing, physics spazzing out, whatever. I haven't played a single VR game where that shit doesn't happen. If people, just hordes of them, can love Blade and Sorcery, which is the jankiest fucking game I've ever played, I don't understand how anybody could complain about this, because it's not any worse than that, I can promise you that much. Also, and this is a big one, a big complaint. The game appears to have stopped updates on PC VR but continued them on Quest. Basically, the Rift version and the Steam version are the same, but the Quest version has a few more extra challenge missions. The graphics in the desktop versions are much better than the Quest version, and I noticed that occasionally some of the geometry in the levels is a little bit more complex, like a extra scaffold here or there, things like that. So it's really up to you what you value more. Do you want some extra challenge missions, or better graphics and slightly more complex levels? Either way, you can't go wrong. All of the gameplay and systemic interactions I listed above are 100% the same in both versions. Also, for people who have Oculus devices, it supports cross-buy, so you can either buy the Quest or the Rift version, and you get both. So if you have an Oculus device, don't buy it through the Steam store, buy it through one of the Oculus stores, you get both anyway, may as well. People also complain about the AI, and yeah, it's pretty dumb, but it's not any worse than any arcane game, really. This whole idea of stealth games needing really amazing AI honestly perplexes me. What an AI in a stealth game needs to do is to react to your distractions appropriately, be able to be lured easily, and to murder you when you make a mistake. It doesn't really need to be much more complex than that. It's fun to sneak up behind people and kill them, it's fun to clear out a room of guards one by one, it's fun to get detected and hide and have the enemy on the other side of a filing cabinet as you hold your breath afraid he'll find you. You don't need amazing AI for that, and Espire can do all those things. Espire lets you use creativity, intuition, skill, quick thinking, and good planning to sneak your way through a complex facility, hunting down guards while avoiding detection and climbing and discovering new unique routes to take as you accomplish your objectives. It has main missions, extra challenge missions, unlockable cheats, optional challenges in the main missions, and quite a lot of content for a VR game. I've been in like a five year video game slump where games just really haven't inspired me the way they used to and I haven't really enjoyed gaming for a long time. Playing Aspire though, it's really gotten me out of that. It was the first time in a long time that I played a game and I was genuinely enthralled with just how awesome it was. Just being able to have an idea on the fly while you're playing like, I wonder if the repair tool can shock this turret. And then trying it out and realizing it works, realizing that the game never told you that this was possible, but that you used your own critical thinking, reasoning, and mind to come up with an idea to help you in the mission, only to have it work just the way you wanted to. 
You don't feel held back by the game. You feel like you're free to explore and be creative and to come up with outside of the box solutions to complex problems all on your own without any hand holding or help. It's, it's so rewarding. And in the end, it makes you feel like you really are a secret agent sneaking through this facility using your skills and gadgets. But the most important weapon you have at your disposal is your mind. And in Espire, you're free to use it. All right, thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. My health is a million times better than what it was a couple years ago, and I'm actually ready to get back into the saddle and make some more videos. So keep an eye out for those, and I hope you have a good day. Peace out.